Glory to God. We're looking this morning at stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. We'll see that that is a, a part of a scripture and we're going to see that there are real necessities that require us to stand fast. That is, not to be moved, not to be shaken, not to be taken all over the place or to be led astray, but to actually stand fast because God is a God of truth and the Bible tells us that the spirit of truth leads us into all truth. And as we're led into all truth, we are going along a particular path of truth. God's word is truth. That particular path is one which is a good path, a path of blessing, a path of strength. And uh, this is the way we want to be focusing our hearts on is going that way. Let's first of all look at, uh, in the scriptures, the book of Galatians. Galatians. And we'll look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Well, actually, we'll go back just to Galatians chapter 3 first. Galatians 3 verse 1. And it says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you? One thing that's a real plague on the Christian church at the moment is the fact that there are people who are bewitching others not to obey the truth. And so they downplay the word of God, they downplay the importance of the truth and they bring up other things as though they're more important and that's the way people should be going. Now that's a sad situation because if people go along that particular way, they're not going to be obeying the truth. You know, if you want to be a powerful Christian, a victorious Christian, you must have the word of God in you, you must know the word of God, and you must be very clear about the word of God, that the word of God is the truth and it's the way we should be going in. Now, sadly, there are people who are leading others astray so that they're not walking in the truth. Now, we are to be people that stand fast in the faith. We're to be people that are standing fast in the truth of God and seeing that there are people around and, uh, of course, used of the devil, used in deception and so on, that are leading people not to obey the truth. They might come acting very nice and saying, well, you know, this is a nice thing for you to be doing and this will make you feel good, but is it going to help them obey the truth? Is it going to help them go the right way or are they going to be people that will end up with a shipwrecked type of faith? You know, we can't be people that have a shipwrecked type of faith but be people that are going forward strongly in the truth of God, forward strongly in the truth of God. If you have a look also, and we'll go to Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, verses 16 onwards. We'll read a few verses from 16. And Paul the Apostle says here, Am I therefore become your enemy? because I tell you the truth. So the truth can be quite direct. It might be as simple as, you know, the scripture is very clear you should be fellowshipping in church and not thinking you can be a Christian and not go to church. It could be as simple as that. It's from the book of Hebrews, not to forsake the gathering of yourselves together. So we clearly see that there are truths that people can be led away from. 
People might be led away from the truths of healing or the truths of prosperity or the truths of victory. But the, when the truth is spoken, it shouldn't be, oh, am I become your enemy? You're, you're reacting as though I'm your enemy now. But there are people around that zealously affect other people, and we see that in verse 17. They zealously affect you, but not well. Why? Because we saw they cause people not to obey the truth, not to be led of the Spirit of God, which is leading people, guiding people into all truth. Verse 17, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. Verse 18 is the way we should be going, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing and not only when I am present with you. We need to be zealously affected, but not in the wrong thing and not by wrong people. Like you wouldn't be going to someone and saying, well, what do you think about tithing or what do you think about fellowshipping and those people are disobedient to that. You wouldn't be going to them. You would be going to the word and saying, well, what does the word say about tithing? What does the word say about fellowshipping? What does the word say about the local church? What does the word say about victory? What does the word say about faith? What does the word say about being led of the spirit? I could go on and on. You wouldn't go to people who really are leaving those type of things out of their life and pretending that that's going to be a good thing. You want to be zealously affected always in a good thing, the word of God, those of knowledge, spiritual knowledge, those who are called of the Lord to show the right way. You know, the victory that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ is that we stay fast in him and in his word. Jesus talked about the wise man building his house upon the rock. And that rock was his sayings, his word. So people need to be fast and standing on a firm foundation, the foundation of the truth of the word of God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we'll read from verses 14 to verse 17. So we see that if you want to know the truth, you're not going to be going to people or sources that are disobeying the truth, that are outside of the truth, that are allowing themselves to be affected by all the wrong things. You would be going to the word of God and saying, well, what is the truth of a matter according to the spirit of God? So 2 Corinthians chapter 2, starting from verse 14, now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savour of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish to the one we are the savour of death unto death to the other the savour of life unto life, and who is sufficient for these things. Verse 17, really important one to grab hold of. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. It is a corruption of the word of God to speak against the word of God or to say, ah, oh, you don't have to go that way and lead people away from the truth. That is a sad thing, but it is rife across the body of Christ to the extent that some people think it's okay to have online church and no gatherings. Some people think it's okay not to go to church at all. Some people think it's okay not to partake of the Lord's Supper with the gathered people and so on. We can go on and on. Some people think 
that the word of God is a fantasy book. That's the way they act. And that's not the way we should be acting. We should be as people that are not corrupting the word of God. And corruption starts from the way we see it. You know, someone doesn't just come, and you might think about the modern versions, they didn't just come and say, well, you know, let's just do, I'll do this little bit of alteration. No, they came with a motive. They came with a desire. They came with a conformity to the wrong things where they were going to say, well, we have to get our way. We have to get this change and this change and so on. But we are a people that stand with one word and so we can have one voice. We can have one hope and one mind about things. And we are not as many. It's a sad thing that he's saying that there's many that do this. But we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity. Sincerity comes from the heart. We want the Lord to speak to us. We want his truth. We don't want to be part of those who are given to change and corruption, but we want to be immovable in the Lord, fixed in the Lord, strong in the Lord, having our house built on the rock, in the Lord, as of sincerity, but as of God. That's what we want to be fixing our hearts and minds on God. In the sight of God speak we in Christ. So we have the victory. We have the victory. It says, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. So where we go, there's going to be the savour of his knowledge coming with us. And that's, that's what a word person is going to be like. Their actions, their thoughts, their words are going to come out. Okay? You're not going to be saying things like, oh, I can, I can partake of that. doesn't matter if I do a bit of drinking of alcohol. That's fine. doesn't matter if. I let out a swear. Well, everyone's doing it. Why shouldn't I do it? No, we must be people that are conforming to the image of Christ. Christ was not a profane person. He was a person and is a person of the truth. In fact, he calls himself the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we cannot be a person that is sliding down the way of corruption and disobedience to the truth. Regardless of whether hundreds of thousands do it, we must not do it. And if we, if we are going to be the remnant, then so be it. We must be people that are going along the lines of the truth of God's word. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify means being separated. Separated from sin and separated unto God. And it comes through the word of God. You want to be a word person? You want to be a word person? You want to be a faith person? You're a person of the word. Get the word in your heart. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, the Bible tells us. Let's have a look also at Revelation 16, verse 15. Well, we'll go back a little bit. We'll start from verse 13. Because I want you to see that what's coming out of the mouths of various people and various sources, and you can see it on a high political scale, you can see it through the education system, through the media, through false religious witnesses and so on. And we see this starting from verse 13 of Revelation 16. It says here, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, Come out of the mouth of the dragon, the dragon's the devil, and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So what can we see? There are spiritual forces that work through people. Can you see that? It's very important to understand that. And these unclean spirits are not going to be pushing the truth. Does everyone understand that? 
They're not pushing the truth. And what, what does verse 14 says? For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, you know, you might have someone coming up to you and saying, oh, oh, God's doing something great. Look at those miracles. But you've got to measure it, don't you? You've got to look at it with the measuring tape of the word of God and say, does it match up with the truth? Is it matching up with the truth? Because it might be in this category of verse 14. They are the spirits of devils working miracles. Now that's interesting. Verse 15, this is Jesus speaking. Behold, I come as a thief. So that's very quickly. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Are you a person that watching? You're watching around, you're aware, you understand things spiritually, you're keeping your garments, the garments of the righteous, the fine linen of the saints is the righteousness of the saints. Okay, so you keeping yourself spotless from the sin of the world? Are you living a holy life? Are you going the way of the truth? Or are you giving in to that bewitching so that you disobey the truth. Sadly, there's many that are, and they're going to be caught out. Verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. So there's people that are not watching. They're not, they're not watching out and saying, well, am I keeping on track on the truth, or am I being led astray? Well, that looks nice and glittery. Those smoke machines seem wonderful. Perhaps I should, I'm attracted to that. Or are you attracted to the wonderful Lord Jesus Christ, who is a reflection and, and of the word of God, of the will of God, and in fact, his title is the word. So we see here that we are to be people that are watching and keeping our garments, keeping ourselves in holiness, understanding and not, not allowing ourselves to be diverted, not allowing ourselves to be distracted, but being people of faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Glory to God. We are people that are following the Lord continually. You know, the scripture is very clear about faith. And I just want to point out the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark 11, verse 22. And what, what this is saying is that if we're to have faith in God, we must trust that God is true, his word is true, his foundation is true, and we can stand in that and walk in that as in something that is firm and fixed and strong but has blessing, wonderful blessing, wonderful blessing because you're not going to be caught up in the, we'll call it, religious storm, religious storm where you've got these unclean spirits out there speaking through people and doing various things such as working miracles. You're not going to be caught up in that because you're going to measure it with the measuring tape of the word of God. Glory to God. Mark 11, Mark 11, verse 22. We know this. We see here that there is a very clear, very clear command. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Right, what's he saying? Have faith in God. Your focus must always be God. I believe, the spirit of faith is I believe and therefore speak. I believe and therefore speak. 
Some people might think that you're their enemy because you tell them the truth. But they need the truth. They need the truth. And we're not going to be people that are backward in that. We're going to have a savour of the knowledge of God wherever we go as we are people of the truth. Have faith in God means that you are going to have your trust in the Lord, not in man, but trusting in the Lord and in his word, in his ways. Glory to God. Glory to God. Have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. The Lord is very gracious to his people and gives his people instructions, instructions, even in a dangerous world, instructions so that we are not distracted, not taken off the path. Because if you're taken off the path of truth, you're taken off the path of blessing, you're you're taken off the path of victory, you're taken off the path of prosperity, You're taking off the path of healing. Can you see what I'm saying? You want to be on that path of truth and be fixed in the faith, be fixed in the word, be fixed in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 16, starting from verse 13, Watch ye, we saw that before, watch ye, be watchful, watch ye, stand fast, In the faith. Stand fast in the faith. What does that mean? Is there an enemy that is trying to get you off the faith? There is, isn't there? Is there an enemy that's using people, unclean spirits, even in the working of miracles or so-called signs and wonders to try to get you off the faith? Is there? There is, isn't there? And there has to be that great warning that goes out so that people understand that there is this enemy and he's a subtle enemy, crafty, and he's wanting to deceive and to keep people in deception and blindness and darkness. But we are commanded, watch ye stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Quit you like men. What does that mean? Quit you like men. Quit acting like a weakling and be like a man who is strong. Quit acting like a weakling and understand that God is your strength and power. We must be people that are standing in the Lord. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. And verse 14 says, let all your things be done with charity. Now let me remind you that the King James Bible is very clear. It uses the word love and it uses the word charity. Charity is a particular form of love. It's love demonstrated in action. Okay? Love in action. So notice it says, let all your things be done with charity. And it's got to come out of your heart because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. Let that come out of your heart and out of your mouth, words of love. But, you know, speaking the truth in love, the Bible tells us in Ephesians, speaking the truth in love. That doesn't make us other people's enemies unless they decide to be an enemy of God. But we must be people that are consistent in our love walk. Faith which worketh by love, the Bible tells us, this is an important thing to understand. Let all your things be done with charity, love in action. What are we doing? Are we doing things out of a wrong motive? Are we doing things in disobedience? Or are we doing things because we love God with all our heart and we love our neighbour as ourself? It should be that. 
We love God with all our heart, our strength, our mind, our might, and we love our neighbour as ourself. We're doing all things with charity. So stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. Be a watchful person. Stand fast in the faith. Glory to God. Have a look at Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 7. The Lord is leading his people into truth. He's not leading us away from truth. He's not guiding us into something that's going to cause you to be disobedient to him. And as we've seen before, there are people used of the devil and against the Lord. Ephesians 4, starting from verse 1, and we'll go to verse 7. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There's a few things here. Verse 3 tells us, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Unity of the Spirit. You cannot walk in unity if there's disagreement about what the truth is and how to walk in the truth. It's not possible. Notice there is one body. There is not many bodies of Christ, like some person tried to tell me once, but there is one body, one body of Christ and one spirit, one spirit of truth. Is the spirit of truth leading people and guiding people into truth? He is. What happens if people aren't going into truth? What happens if they're violating the word of God? and letting themselves be astray. Why? Because they're not listening to the spirit of truth. But the Bible tells us there is one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one Lord, one faith. God is not a divided God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, talking about one baptism that leads people into the body of Christ, into that one body, and that's being born again. The Bible tells us when you're born again, you are baptised by the Spirit into the body of Christ. That's, that's a spiritual baptism, separate from water baptism and separate from spirit baptism the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So we see there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace. That's his enabling. Unmerited favour. He's enabling according to the measure of the gift of Christ. He has given you a purpose on the earth. He's given us all a purpose on the earth to do something for him. So that when we come into eternity, we're not saying, well, uh, I let that, you, you can, you can, you don't have to 
concentrate on that, do you, Lord? The Lord will have a few words to say to people. You had opportunities. You had opportunities in the Lord. They opened doors for you, and yet you chose not to go that way. Why? Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? There's the big question, isn't there? Okay, so let's have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 and 2. We are people on the earth to do something for the Lord. Not nothing, but something. The Bible says we're being created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We weren't saved by good works. Our works couldn't save us. But now that we're in Christ, now that we've been baptised into the body of Christ, we are now people that are saved to do something for the Lord. And 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 and 2. Where are we standing? How are we standing? He says here, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So the gospel must be preached, you'll notice here, what I preached unto you, and it must be believed, not believed in vain, in other words, when you believe the gospel and come into the body of Christ, you must stand in that. You must continue in that. You cannot go strongly for the Lord for two months and then neglect him for the rest of your life and think that that's okay. You may end up a shipwreck and completely out of salvation if that's the case. No. No. The gospel, he says, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you and wherein ye stand. You must stand. You are no longer a sinner. And what blasphemy it is to say I'm a sinner saved by grace. You are no longer a sinner. You're now a righteous person who has been saved and bought with a price. Verse 2, By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And I just want to finish off with Philippians 1, 27 and 28. Stand fast in the faith. Today we've been looking in Philippians 1, 27 and 28. How are we to live? Well, we're to live as people with a mission, as people who have a desire to do the will of God and to go God's way. Look at verses 27 and 28. It says, Only let your conversation, and that's your manner of life, your words and actions, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. So how are we to act now? It's got to match up with the gospel of Christ. What did the glorious gospel do to you? It changed you on the inside, didn't you, as you believed it? The Bible says it's the power of God, the gospel of Christ, the power of God, unto salvation to everyone that believeth. So you believed it. and It was the power of God to you. It changed you. You become a new creature in Christ. You have a new position now. You're in the body of Christ. You're a child of God. You're a king and a priest. You're not a normal person. The Bible says we are peculiar people. That means stand out type of people. You're not like those in the natural. You are supernaturally derived. And now you walk supernaturally. Only let your conversation be as it becometh 
the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Isn't that interesting? He says, look, you shouldn't be acting right just when I'm around. You should be like this always. How? You stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Verse 28, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Terror should not be a part of you. Fear is not a part of you. Fear, terror and oppression is far from you. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what you are now, a person of power and of love and of a sound mind. In nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. What's come out of your salvation? That you're not terrified. You're not even fearful of death. You know, the Bible talks about people kept in bondage by the fear of death. You're not, even, you're not afraid of that because death has no sting now. Death has no sting. Glory to God because of the Lord Jesus Christ. The death of the righteous is blessed because it's a transition. You're not afraid. You're not a person of fear. You're a person of unity in the spirit. You're a person of the truth. You're a person that's going to stand fast in the faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's close in prayer. Praise you, Lord.